So, yesterday, we kind of reviewed a lot. It was Monday. Monday is a good day to review. Um, and you got some help, and we extruded out the stem, and then we extruded out a big wing. And so, what we did at the end of the period yesterday was we made our square or circular, um, we made our square or our circular wing panel look more hexagonal. And so to kind of review what we did here very quickly was, number one, I grabbed these center faces. I went to face mode. I went one, two, three, four, five. Oops, I missed. Once again, one, two, three, four, five. Darren Whisper. Hit scale. Scroll down. So it's really, 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 really tiny. And then I'm going to do this in a slightly different order because I feel like it made sense yesterday when I was teaching you, but since you've seen it, the other thing we need to do is we need to shrink this center face because that's going to help make these lines more diagonal. So you take the center face and I make it pretty small. And that's going to help create that other piece there. Okay? Now, so I did two things with faces. I took all five of the center faces, the three in the middle here, and one looped around each side, scaled them down. Then I took the center one here, and I shrunk it. And the reason why I'm doing that is because it makes these edges, you guys see these edges? It makes them more diagonal, right? And I did that in a different order than yesterday. Okay, next, I'm gonna take these edges here. Right click, go to edge mode. I'm gonna take the corners. And it's the teeny tiny edges. This edge up here in this corner, it's just like this edge up here in this corner. This edge up here in this corner. Other side. This edge up here in this corner. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale R again. And the reason why I scale them is because it really kind of helps with, it, it keeps everything symmetrical. So I like to grab all four. I'm going to line them up with the outside corner of that image by using scale, by grabbing those four edges. And someone might have asked, Mr. G, can't you just take these vertexes here, drag a box through if you're in camera-based selection is checked off? Yes. You could do it like that. Vertexes and grab those four corners, but I like to do the edges. And you'll notice that the top of the box needs work. Like I said, I'm reviewing from yesterday, which is why I'm going really fast. I'm going to grab one edge, two edge, three edge, four edge. And I'm going to scale R. I'm going to make them wider until those become like the corners. And they need to be, oops, they need to be a little bit taller. So I'm going to pull them up there. Now it's looking much like a hexagon. I could probably pull out these two sides over here. So once again, I'm going to go back to the face mode. The goal is just to make this look like a hexagon. Bam. With these edges being very diagonal. So now I have like these six wedges, and then I have this center wedge here that's, that's kind of messed up. Okay. We have the basic shape. And like I said, I demonstrated yesterday you're going to cut it in half. If you didn't cut it in half, don't worry about it. Um, we're gonna, I'm going to demonstrate how to cut it in half again. But we got two. We have the rough version of our TIE fighter here. We need to add details in two spots. The panel here and the cockpit here. The panel, the cockpit, right? What do we want to do first? It won't matter. We can do one or the other first. Which one would you like to do first? The cockpit or the wing panel? Raise your hand. Tell your neighbor first. Tell your neighbor which one you want to do. Do we want to add detail? Do we want to add the windshield and the thrusters and a gun barrel? Or do we want to add all the details to the wing right now? Tell your neighbor. Go. All right. 
Discuss the pros and the cons. Oh, you don't have a neighbor. Is your neighbor here? How come you guys are talking? Which one do you want to do? The wings or the which one? Talk. When I say talk, Christian, talk to your neighbor. What does she want to do? Let's put it to a vote. Ready? I'm going to turn on the lights. It's a very big deal. Raise your hand if you want to add the cockpit details. Whoa. Raise your hand if you want to add the wing details. Winner by three or four. You don't vote. You don't count. We're in a lesson. November, what is it? November 2nd? When do we vote? November 5th? November 5th. November 11th? November 9th. We vet, we, November 9th. Okay. By a three to nothing vote in a class of 24, we're going to do the wing details. That's what you guys voted for. All right. So let's do it. So let's look at the picture for a second. All right? The election was rigged. Let's look at the picture for a second. There it is. Um, so, a couple of things here with the wing. We, we have this center frame, but we, it would be nice if we had um, two edges here and two edges here. Also, um, we have this little hexagon pattern here that kind of is going to stick out a little bit. I know because if I look at the side one, it, it extrudes out just a little bit. And having known from the toys and everything, like, these are all kind of bulging out a little bit, and the panel is actually indented. And you don't really get that from the pictures. You just have to kind of know, right? Um, so let's do it, shall we? All right, first thing we're going to do. Uh, in our side view, we're going to be jumping back between the side and the front view. We can do this several ways. Let's see what happens when we do an edge loop. I forget. Everyone prepare to undo. Insert, edge loop. I'm giving you the wrong answer first. Yes. I need, let's do it. What that's happening is when I'm cutting it with an edge loop, it's cutting it all the way through. And so that's not going to give me the result I want. Right? So don't do an edge loop. And Daniel went, well, because of your lecture before, Mr. G, Darren Whisper. Because of the lecture before, Mr. G, you said if we can't edge loop, we're going to multi-cut. And Daniel could do it with a multi-cut. You could. However, I'm going to show you another trick. Ready for the next trick? You ready, class? No? Ready or not? Yes? All right. Select all nine faces again. Problem is, is that all nine faces are now, you have three very small faces and three very big faces. So select the, th the six triangles, and then the three tiny ones in the center. Like that. So I'm selecting all six. Activate x-ray mode. You might be in four. Hit B, Oscar. If something shows up yellow, hit B. You hit it twice. There. Um, B, if, it, if, it, if your computer, if it ever looks like that, hit B. We'll learn about that mode later. OK, so I got all nine faces right? on the outside. Select them, John. You can do this part. All nine faces. Boom, 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 boom. OK, and then x-ray mode is this button up here again. That's going to really help. And I'm going to extrude Command-E. I'm going to turn off my x-ray so you can see what I'm doing. Command E. I'm going to hit that global tool. And I'm going to grab, I'm going to hit the scale. 
this little scale box, it activates the center scale box, right? I'm going to do this again, don't worry. And the first extrusion, I'm not going to pull it out. I'm just going to pull it in with scale. I'm going to scale it down a little bit, and I'm going to scale it in a little bit, right? And so this gives me this nice, cool border, which if you look at my x-ray mode, it has. You see how it has this little border on the edge here, right? So that first extrusion, I'm not pulling out. I'm not pulling in. I'm not making an extrusion like you typically make one. What I'm doing is, is I'm making an extrusion to kind of make this first ridge. I'm going to do the whole process over. Okay? So, double checking the X. Yes. All right, so my first extrusion, Command E. I'm going to hit the global tool. I'm going to grab the green box and scale it in a little this way. And I'm going to grab the blue box and scale it in a little this way. How do I know how much? Because you guys are in x-ray mode and you can use this as your guide. So you're making this little frame. You see how the gray frame before you see like the black? I'm assuming there's solar panels, right? I'm assuming TIE fighters are gathering solar radiation through those giant panels. I think that's, that's, that's how they're supposed to work in this weird sci-fi world of ours, right? Okay. So I've made one extrusion, but I didn't pull it out. I didn't use the red arrow at all, right? I only shrunk it in, okay? I'm gonna do the same thing again. I know, it's a, it's, it's a Tuesday, I know. I'm gonna do the same thing again, but this time, the same exact strategy. But this time, this extrusion is going to be for this hexagon right here. Everyone see the hexagon I'm looking at? It's going to be for the inner hexagon. So I'm going to hit extrude again. I'm going to turn off my extrude so I can see it. Nope. I'm going to hit Command E. Hit that global tool, the global switch. I'm going to pull it way in this way, green box and blue box and then I'm going to use x-ray mode to make sure it's it's nice and awesome x-ray mode looks like it needs to be a little bigger here and bigger there something like that there you go
extrusion, pull it out. Give it like a little hubcap type thing. And that's where we left off. And let me make these bigger for you. Display. I can do it one vertex at a time, or two vertexes at a time, or four vertexes at a time. But really, well, all I want to do is just make these a little thicker. So I'm just going to do two at a time, because I think it would confuse you if I select four. Selected, I selected these two inside vertices here. One, two. Went to vertex mode. Right-click held. Chose vertex. Selected one vertex. Selected two vertexes. And I hit scale. R. And then I'm going to pull them in with the... It's, blue, it's, it's yellow, but it's blue, the Z one. I'm going to scale it, and notice the, the, the lines become thicker, right? How thick do you want it to be? That's where the reference image comes into play, right? You want them to be as thick as that, that, that gray bar right there, right? So all we're doing is we're making these... We're making these four bars just kind of be straight and even. So again, I'm going to grab, I can do it here too. One, two, three, four. And I'm going to scale those in, 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 to about right there. Boop. And then one more time, I'm going to grab these four. One, Two, and I'm going to grab them in and in and in and in and in, something like about that. Just so they look relatively evenly spaced. And so when you, when you get out of vertex mode, if you're back in object mode, just so you can see it better, right? These four sets of edges, or these, they're going to be six faces. One, two, three, four, five, six. They're nice and they're parallel lines. They're nice and straight. They're not sinking in. So if you missed how I did that, I'm doing it again. Oops. On this guy. I'm not even going to use my reference images. Uh, sorry. There we go. It's confusing having two. So once again, I'm going to go to vertex mode. Vertex mode. And someone, I think, mumbled. Oh, I just grabbed all four. You could. I could grab the, the, the exact same two below this hexagon and do four at the same time. But I feel like I would lose a few of you, so I don't want to do that. I'm just taking these two and I'm pulling them in. Something about that. One, two. Pull them in. Something about that. And then the same thing for this side. This one I feel like I need to make this part wider a little bit. Oh, undo. One, two. And then one, two. Oops, wrong one. Sorry. Shit. Undo, undo. One, two. Did I get the right ones? Now I'm going to pull them out, hit scale, till they're about straight. Okay. Now you can't actually see this in the drawing, but because of my vast knowledge of Star Wars and playing with Star Wars toys, Star Wars toys since I was five, which was 35 years ago. You can do the math on that. I'm old. I was playing with the original Star Wars toys out of package because I was a kid and didn't know any better. How many did it sell for now? I don't know. In package, hundreds, thousands. Right? Mine's like all dirty and you broken. My lid, no, I don't have it. The lid was broken off. 
like the cockpit lid. It was all dirty and scuffed up because I threw. I would like throw it. Okay. Once you get the panels uh, evened out, the last step for the wing is easy. One. I'm going to select two, three, four, five, six. I have those six big faces. They're like giant trapezoids right now. And guess what I'm going to do? Someone tell me. What am I going to do? I've selected the faces. What's my next move? You know it. What are we going to do? Say it loud. Say it proud. Extrude. Did someone say Google it? Google it. I'm going to extrude. Command E. Boop. I'm going to hit this global tool. And I'm going to push it in. Do, 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 do. I'm just going to give it a little bit of an indent. And so now, those, those tiny little bars create these like little ridges. It's pretty cool, huh? Let me do it on the other one. Did you miss it? I'm going to repeat. So once you get these tiny edges straightened out by being in vertex mode, I'm just repeating what I did one more time, right? Once I get these vertices straightened out, right, then I'm, going to, I'm not going to select them. That's the trick. The trick is not to select these skinny ones, only select the fat ones. And that kind of creates this nice ridge effect, which makes these awesome little shadows. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And I'm going to hit extrude, command E, global, push it in. Bop, 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 bop. Just a little bit like that. If you go too far in, you'll see the other side of the, the wing. You'll, you're, you'll be pushing him through all the way through like that, which is what I think. Tay was doing. So you don't want to go too far. Just a little bit. Just create that little indent. Something like that. A little indent goes a long ways. Looks sick. All right. Last little bit. What we forget? What we forget? What we forget, class? The back side of the wing. The back side of the wing is actually easier. Check it out. Remember how I said edge loop won't work? Guess what? Edge loop works now. On the back side of the loop, on the back side of the wing, do the following. Just go to mesh tools, go to insert edge loop, and check it out. Whoop. Boom. Almost a near perfect hexagon right away. Did you miss that? Did I go too fast? Let me do it again. Mesh tools, insert edge loop, and I'm gonna get it, approximate a hexagon here, bam. If I wanted to kind of like straighten out or perfect it a little bit more, I could, but that's gonna be good enough for me. It's the backside of the wing, who really cares, right? And then I'm going to do the same indent trick I did over here. So again, I'm going to grab the, the fatter faces. One, two, three, blah, 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 blah. I'm going to hit Command E. And this time, I'm going to push them in this side. Oops, I forgot one more thing. Damn. Two, forgot one step. The hexagon still worked. I was going too fast. My bad. Do it. I'll just undo the whole thing. There you go. One step I forgot. Can anyone tell me what step I forgot? I did the edge loop for the hexagon. What did I forget over here? The red, the ridge, the edge there. So I just have to do two edge loops. Totally skipped my mind. That's what Command Z is for, class. Mesh tools, insert edge loop. And I'm going to plop that in there. 
And then I'm going to do one more up top here. And that's going to create my little ridge for the top of the wing. Then I'm going to grab faces. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I'm going to extrude inward. Command E. And just a little bit. Get the global. Pull it in just to kind of have it. Again, don't go too far. Don't run into the other side of the ring. Wing. Push that in. Get these nice, cool ridges. Okay. Once again, to repeat. Got it right here. All right. I'm going to go one more time. Mesh tools. Just, uh, I'm going to do the same exact thing. The inside of the ring. Inside of the wing. Excuse me. Because I have to make two rings with the edge loop. So I'm going to go to Mesh Tools. Insert Edge Loop. Make this one. If I don't like the shape it's making, I could always tweak it. Right? If I don't like this interior shape, I could grab edges or vertices and kind of manipulate the shape a little bit until it becomes the shape I want, right? I can make it a little more hexagonal, a little less hexagonal. So I can kind of customize that shape, right? You are in control. You can move any edge vertex you want. Unless you're Alex and the thing just goes haywire, right? Did I say it right now? It's Alex, right? No? Jesus, who's your neighbor? Hey, it is Alex. Come on, Alex, back me up here. This thing that's calling you the wrong name. I'm going to miss tools here and hit insert edge loop. I'm going to do one more for the edge over here. Something like that. And then again, make sure you quit out of your edge loop. All right, you got to go back, hit Q or hit the arrow here. Hit face. One, two, three, four, five, six. There you go. Hit Command E. Boom. And then push that in. Right. So we're right about there. Maybe a little less. If you are lost or behind or got stuck somewhere, here's the important things to know. The important things to know is tomorrow we're doing the cockpit, which has nothing to do with the wing, so everyone can start fresh on the cockpit. That's number one. Number two, if you didn't do like all the details, like if you didn't do like the extra little hubcap, if, if, if I have like the, the panels stuck in on the outside, and you didn't get to the back side of the wing, that's going to be okay too. I do want to see that you can, you can do that flat extrusion trick. And I do want to see that you can kind of select different ones and push them in. Because extruding inward is just as important as extruding outward. Um, so if you have all that. So if it doesn't look perfect, but you have some sort of indentation. And you, you, you have some sort of ridge with those, with those beams. You're set. Otherwise, right? Uh, we got flex times. I'm going to make a, a, I know I'm just posting all my lectures. I'm going to try to make one nice condensed video as well um, to kind of help you out. But tomorrow during fourth period, fear not, right? If you are completely lost on the wing and you have a cube, if you have a cube, you can do what we're doing tomorrow. So if all you have is a cube, you got a nice, good, fresh restarting checkpoint, and then maybe flex time today or tomorrow or the next day or lunch tomorrow or the next day or whenever, um, you can mess with the next part. So fear not with that. Okay?